In UX design, data and metrics are tools that help us to really understand user behavior and preferences. They are the numbers and facts we gather from user interactions with our products, but it's not just about collecting data. It's about using this information to make really informed design decisions. Now, why are these metrics so vital? They allow us to move beyond the guesswork and our internal bias as to what good or bad design really is. With concrete data, we can actually understand our users a lot better and work towards tailoring designs to meet their needs more effectively, ultimately leading to higher user satisfaction, better user retention, and even more money. Now, there are different types of metrics, and depending on your team and what you're building, you will have different metrics that you track. And most times, you will either want those numbers to go up or down. And one example of common metrics we usually track in a product is engagement rate. This is essentially a rate that shows us how users interact with our product. Are they frequently using it? How long do they stay? Usually we want this number to go up as higher engagement rates usually means higher chance to monetize and possibly even refer other customers. So we always want that. Then of course there's churn rates a critical metric that indicates how many users stop using our product. We want this number to go down and stay as low as possible, ideally. Understanding why users leave can be as important as understanding why they stay. Now, as mentioned earlier, depending on your team and product, you could have very unique metrics. Uh, for example, if you're working on a video creation app that helps people quickly generate video content, you might want to track the video creation completion rates, right? Which is essentially how many users are able to start the video creation process, download the video, and even share it to others. And also track how many users quit midway before downloading. Another key thing to be aware of are your team's North Star and guardrail metrics. Now, if you haven't heard these terms before, essentially a North Star metric is the one metric that's the primary measure of your product success. This one metric will inform most of your team's projects and of course design initiatives. Alongside this, we also have something called guardrail metrics, which are numbers we closely observe to ensure we're not sacrificing one aspect of the user experience for another. An example could be, you know, while we want to increase engagement rates, we also want to monitor how any changes we make could potentially affect churn rates. In this example, churn rate is our guardrail metric. Now, how are these metrics really measured? It's a collaborative effort. So the software engineers implement tracking in the product, while usually the data analysts and sometimes even the UX designers are able to interpret this data. Typically, to ensure we are making data-driven product decisions, teams run what we call experiments. Now, with experiments, different sets of users interact with different versions of the product. This difference in each version could be visual changes, you know, like maybe changing the layout or it could be changes in the copy or just an overall restructured flow. We then observe and measure which version has a lower or higher metric depending on what outcome we are expecting or working towards. We then compare it to the original version, which is called the control version. If the version performs better than the existing version, we productize this meaning it is now available for all of our users to access and explore it as it has improved the target metric. So that's really what success looks like. It is productizing a particular change based on improved metrics. And we use tools like Google Analytics, Amplitude, or Mixpanel to actually track these user interactions during experiments. Getting comfortable with these tools can actually give you a really big edge and help you stand out as a designer. Let's use an example case study to really understand data a lot better. So let's say hypothetically Spotify, the popular music streaming service, noticed an issue with their churn rate, people were canceling their subscriptions, and they really want to understand why this was happening. So let's say Spotify analyzes user activity and discovers that users were actually struggling to find new music that fits their tastes, and that made them just get sick of everything and cancel. So Spotify could potentially respond by improving their onboarding process. 
and introduce, let's say, a new feature where users are prompted to select their favorite artists while onboarding, allowing Spotify's algorithm to immediately create personalized playlists and suggestions that could really help it be a more engaging experience for new users. The result of this could potentially be a reduction in churn rate as people have more options, they feel like the app already knows them. So this will not only reduce churn, but overall increase user satisfaction, proving the efficiency and effectiveness of data-driven design. So in summary, in conclusion, data and metrics are indispensable in UX design, and it's actually not that complicated as you might initially think. If you're a designer, basic data and analytics skills are extremely valuable and could make a huge difference in your work with other team members. Thank you all so, so much for watching. If this video was helpful, please do not forget to support me by liking, sharing, and of course, subscribing to my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching and see you next time.